Peace will fill the world when we finally understand That only from within can it be spread throughout the land Every single person living peace in what we do Only then will our dream come true Only then will our dream come true Only then will our dream come true Good morning, friends. I'm Leona Evans, minister at Unity of San Luis Obispo, an inclusive, progressive, spiritual community affirming the good in all life. Welcome to our Sunday morning live stream. I'm delighted that you're here, and I'm excited about sharing a topic with you today that I think is quite important on a variety of levels. The title of my lesson is Declutter Your Life. And this is true not only for the things or the stuff we accumulate in our homes or in our cars, but the thoughts that we accumulate in our minds that are probably better off not in our possession. So let's take a deep breath and relax. Let's open up our minds and hearts to be receptive to the message today to the wonderful music, to the soothing meditation. Prepare to be transformed. And in order to do that, we need to focus, we need to pay attention, we need to recognize that there is something to hear that might be new and transformative. And there's also something to recognize that we might be hearing things we've heard before, but today we're receiving them in a brand new way. And it's very, very exciting. So once again, take a deep breath, feel at peace, feel your muscles relax, feel your focus, and let us affirm together I am now open and receptive to the living spirit of truth. Once again, I am now open and receptive to the living spirit of truth. And so it is. Amen. Let's begin our service today as we always do with a joy song presented by Matthew J. Evans. Good morning. Today we're going to sing When the Saints Go Marching In. Please sing along with the lyrics on the bottom of the screen. Oh, when the saints come marching in. Oh, when the saints come marching in. Oh, Lord, I want to be in that number when the saints come marching in. Oh, when the sun begins to shine oh when the sun begins to shine oh lord i want to be in that number when the sun begins to shine oh when my friends come in the room oh when my friends come in the room oh lord i want to be in that number when my friends come in the room Oh, when the love shines through in us Oh, when the love shines through in us Oh, Lord, I want to be in that number When the love shines through in us Oh, when the saints come marching in Oh, when the saints come marching in Oh Lord, I want to be in that number when the saints come marching in. Oh, hey, 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 oh, h
Well, Unity of San Luis Obispo, as I mentioned before, is a progressive, inclusive spiritual community. We are part of the New Thought movement, and we believe that there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in our lives. That presence is what we refer to as God or spirit or the living spirit of truth. By any other name, it is one. One creative force, its nature is good, its attributes are unconditional love, life, and wisdom, and we believe that this presence indwells all life. And so what does knowing that mean to us? Well, it means that we can access that presence of unconditional love within us and find new and more expanded ways to express ourselves, to express our divine potential, to feel connected with all of life and therefore feel benevolent toward all of life, all the people in it and all of nature. We have the opportunity to empathize with one another, to improve the quality of our relationships, to acknowledge that the Spirit of God indwells every aspect of our being. And we can affirm healing. We can affirm prosperity, which to us in unity is defined as a recognition of all sufficiency sufficiency in all things, no lack anywhere because of the nature of spirit that is everywhere present and available to us at all times. And so when we come together on Sundays, we don't talk about how to ask God for things we don't already have. We don't go to somebody named God to try to get into God's good graces. We already know that God is not a personality, but God is the absolute unchanging truth that has no opposite. God is unconditional love. And if we know that, if we are not inundated with mind stuff and old feelings that drag us down and old memories of people having said mean things to us or are being bullied in school, if we don't have those issues to deal with, how much clearer can we be? How much wiser can we be? How much more focused can we be? We don't have to look at other people and fear how badly they can hurt us. We don't have to look at people and be triggered to remember someone that looks like that person that we encountered a long time ago who was cruel to us. After all, the truth is, we've already lived through those experiences once. Why would we want to do it again? Why would we want to hold on to things that no longer have any use for us or that wore out their usefulness a long time ago? Well, this is an interesting topic. Let's begin with the clutter that we often accumulate in our purse or pockets or car or kitchen drawers or garage. Let's talk about some of the really important best-selling books that have come out in the not too recent past as well as currently talking about how to declutter. You know, there are a number of reasons for that. One of the reasons is that we are in a process of trying to reduce, reuse, and recycle. And in that new environment for many of us, we don't want to overshop. And we don't want to hold on to things that have no use to us, but might have use to someone else. 
and we don't hold on to things because we think we might use them in the future, even though we haven't used them for the last five years, um, and then won't know how to have it or we'll have to buy it again. Those things have consequences for our well-being and also on the economy and also on the ecology. And so when we talk about decluttering our homes, I am always aware when I do it that I'm not only decluttering the closet, but I am making room in my closet to either let it be roomy or put things in that have greater value to me that I can really use that will contribute to my well-being, to the cleanliness of the house, to um, my work, to my hobbies. There are so many spaces that could be unoccupied if we gave them the chance to breathe. So when I do declutter, I'm always aware, even though it's an exhausting process, depending on how much we've accumulated, and there are all kinds of choices we have to make. Is this battery still good? Well, so what if it did expire in 2010? Don't you think it could be recharged? All of these questions that come up when we're seized with the task of decluttering. But even though it's difficult and even though it's challenging and even though it can be quite arduous and involve some heavy lifting, at the same time, I continue to affirm every single time I declutter, I am releasing of and letting go of all that doesn't serve me. I am releasing and letting go and seeing to it that those items that can be used are given to those who can make use of it so that we lessen our overconsumerism, so that we think of others in our own process of letting go and also so that we understand and know at the end of the day or two days or a week or however long it takes we know at the end of the day what we have where it is and what it can be used for by us now, those are pretty important ideas when we come back from hearing some wonderful music by Brett Mitchell and Matthew J. Evans, we'll talk a bit about stuff. Many years ago, one of our great comedians who passed on several years ago, George Carlin, gave a groundbreaking monologue that is all over YouTube and is considered to be a classic about stuff. And while it's extremely funny, it's also spot on in terms of our spiritual transformation. Here's a tune by Harold Arlen and Johnny Mercer from 1944. Kind of positive little, little ditty. Kind of, it goes like this. Gather round me, everybody. Gather round me while I preach some. I feel a sermon coming on. In my story, settle back, just sit tight.
you got to accept You wait for positive Manipulate Latch on to the affirmative Don't mess with Mr. in between You got to spread joy Up to the maximum Bring gloom down to the minimum Have faith the pandemonium I'm on a walk around the scene To illustrate my last remark Jonah in the way that no one did it. What did they do just when Everything looked so dark Man, they said we better accentuate the positive And we better eliminate the negative Latch on to the affirmative Don't mess with that Mr. in between It's very good. Very good. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brett Mitchell and Matthew J. Evans. That was just terrific. You guys are adorable together. So let's get back to our topic of decluttering. I think it's important to point out that anytime we engage in the process of decluttering, it's a metaphor for that activity that needs to go on not only with our things, but with our thoughts and feelings in consciousness. It's a process that needs to go on periodically. As a matter of fact, the more often we do it, the less we feel bombarded by the clutter and all the stress that it brings. So whether we're talking about our things, our stuff, or we're talking about unwanted thoughts or, or negative beliefs, we're still talking about the same process, releasing and letting go and being able to use wisely those things that we choose to keep. Well, as I mentioned before, many years ago, George Carlin came up with this amazing monologue that he called Stuff. And he talked about the importance of our stuff in ways that were not only extremely humorous, but ways that we actually related to and found that we could laugh at ourselves just as easily and learn something from what he was saying. George Carlin said in his monologue that he believed that the reason people lived in houses 
was so they could store their stuff. He said, we have stuff everywhere. We have all kinds of stuff, big stuff, small stuff. And we accumulate stuff because we think it's really important. It looks great. We'll be able to use it. We have sentimental attachments to it. We don't feel like we should really throw anything away. We feel guilt around it. Or we feel it brings us some sort of safety and security. He says that human beings go so far as to realize at one point that they have too much stuff in their houses and move to bigger houses. That's so funny because I honestly believe I've done that more than once in my life. I mean, the the alternative would be to say, hey, I got too much stuff here. Wouldn't it be great if I could get rid of it? But no, it's like we have to move to a bigger house and then we have to protect our our stuff. Now this is true. We need to ensure it. We need to find the proper uh, wrapping for it. We have to know where to put it. We have to understand how to protect it. And so we seem to be preoccupied with our stuff. What stuff to take on vacation? What to do if we don't have enough stuff? What to do if we can't find the stuff we already have and how we have a dilemma about having to buy stuff again so that when we unpack, we have five toothbrushes and we have 12 beach towels and all kinds of things that we might have needed maybe two of. And so this process of dealing with our stuff was so well received and so many human beings um, who have heard it over the years are able to really laugh about it and maybe even to gain some powerful insights as to what we need to do to maybe not be so attached or preoccupied with our stuff. So we come to understand that there is an accumulation of stuff on a much greater and more pathological level, and that's called hoarding, where the stuff represents something to us that may not be positive. It might be a negative connection that we're making. And there is some psychological trauma involved in this particular set of hoarding activities. And so it's important, I think, to understand that people who do hoard are not doing it because they really choose to trash their homes or to completely accumulate so many things that they can't use, there's a problem that they need to solve. And if any of us know someone in that position, it would behoove us to be gentle with them or to be gentle with ourselves and gain a greater understanding of how to deal with such a problem, what we can do to support a friend or a family member who might be afflicted with this insatiable need to accumulate stuff. And so back to the majority of us who accumulate stuff because we think we'll need it and because it's always good to have it and because we're we might need it at some time in the future or because we just want it around. And that is this. Let's equate it to some of the thoughts and beliefs that we hold in consciousness. What do I hold on to because I think I might need it and because I'm afraid to let go of it? Well, I can tell you that there are some trust issues that I have held on to for many, many years, for decades, because I felt that in order to remember that I can be cheated, I have to hold on to that memory of when I was 
cheated and someone misrepresented himself to me and conned me out of a great deal of money. My hurt mind says, I have to remember that. I have to hold on to it. I have to keep that in mind because it might happen again. And the only reason that it hasn't happened since is that I held on to that thought and I wouldn't let it go. You know, people just can't be trusted. Now here's the obvious problem with that. Holding on to an idea like that and not being willing to let it go, being afraid to let it go, is something that we need to treat with care and with understanding. But we do need to treat it. We do need to understand that that belief is hurting us. And while at one time after the situation occurred, it was very important to keep looking at the various aspects of how I got myself into that, take responsibility for my part, and recognize the other person had responsibility for their part. And eventually, after I had extracted all that I could learn from it, let it go. Because I didn't need to remind myself anymore. I learned. Now, granted, it is possible if we forget too soon, we might encounter a similar situation. And that's why it's important to really understand that something happened once where I was very naive and I maybe didn't pay attention to enough details and I got myself into trouble. There's a way of remembering that without recalling the anger and the pain that we felt in the past. There's a way of recalling it without emotion. And it's the difference between, wait a minute, you remind me or this reminds me of that guy a long time ago who cheated me and I'm not going to trust you because you can't trust anybody and I have to get everything in writing 5,200 times and I have to ask 10 times as many questions because I've been hurt before and you can't trust anybody. There's a difference between that and taking a deep breath and saying, this is a situation where I need to deal with someone who wants a deposit from me to do this work. And I'm just going to check all of the pieces of paper. I'm going to check the warranty. I'm going to ask for a receipt. I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that I'm safe in this deal and that the people, the business people dealing with me are doing so at a high level of integrity. You see, those are two different things. One, I remember with anger because I've refused to let go of it. And the other, I remember because it's a memory, not because it was a hateful memory, but because it was a learning experience. This is the kind of hoarding, the mental and emotional hoarding that can bring us down, that can depress us, that can cause us a great deal of stress and can keep us from ever trusting anybody in our lives. The thought, the belief that I shared with you before about how I never wanted to let go of that experience or that person who cheated me because I was afraid that I'd be too vulnerable or too naive and I would do it again. How long did you think it takes before we could let something like that go? For me, it was around 40 years. And seriously, it wasn't necessary to hold on to it that long. It seemed to color my decisions, my relationships, my understanding, my taking responsibility for my part in it. It was just not 
something that I would either want to give to anyone because I hadn't used it in so long or keep. But there was that one day that I knew that I had to release it and let it go into the trash. It was not useful to me. It would not help anybody else. And I needed to let it go, as scary as that might have been. And so I keep that in mind. That was a very powerful experience for me the day that I chose to let go of the belief that everyone was going to cheat me or take advantage of me. It's not going to be everyone. And if I don't stop believing that I have to fear that, that's going to be at the front of my mind. And all the things of value are going to be blocked inside of me or blocked from coming into my life because that thing takes up so much space, so much emotion, so it's, it's filled with so much pain. There's so much anger, there's so much shame. Those things need to be decluttered. So if we're decluttering our spaces, because the last time I decluttered, I actually did do that in consciousness as well, because uh, a lot of decluttering is boring and, you know, you don't have to give your full attention to, you know, a used yellow pad that got wet, you know, the last time it rained. Um, while I was doing that, I was thinking, what is cluttering my mind? What can I declutter? What can I give up holding on to? Because most of what really needs to be decluttered are things that happened a very long time ago. Everything else since then has just been repeats, quite frankly, because we've held on to that original belief and it's taken root and it's spawned offspring and offspring and offspring and that's been going on all of our lives. And so what can we let go of that originated a long time ago that's no longer true and hasn't been true for a long time and that I don't have to bring into my everyday relationships and I don't have to um, share with everybody. It was true at one time. I believed it was true at one time. It was true at one time. It happened but I don't have to worship it and make it my whole life and hold on to it and provide space for it and deny myself so many opportunities to fill that space with more attractive, positive, and loving things. And so I ask you to take a look at your stuff The physical stuff and the mental and emotional stuff. What can we give to someone that they can use, which we haven't used and probably won't use, but in an effort to waylay some of that over-consumerism, what can we share with others? What can we recycle? What can re we reuse? What can we release? What do we need that would like to occupy that space? Or perhaps we could leave that space and just breathe and relax. Something will come along to fill it. But there's a very interesting rule that applies to metaphysics too that's part of the decluttering process and that is when you let go of something that you can't use. Replace it with something you can. Now, in the case of my not trusting and carrying that so many years, I needed to let go of the belief that I was permanently wounded, that 
people had to pay that you couldn't trust them that I couldn't forgive and forget because then I'd be victimized again. I had to give that up and replace it with the belief that I am wise, I know how to do business, I know how to relate with others, I know how to negotiate, I know how to make deals, to be careful but not paranoid. And I am so grateful that I let go and replaced it. And in our Unity teachings, it's called denial and affirmation, not denial of what happened, but the denial that it has any power over us. So let's go about decluttering and blessing and releasing all things and thoughts that no longer serve us and eventually replacing them with things that benefit our life, thoughts that bless us and enhance our relationships with others. Let's take a deep breath and relax. Continue to breathe deeply as we move into our time of meditation, relaxation, and integration of the concepts we heard today. Affirm in the quiet of your own being. I let go of the habit patterns, negative beliefs that continue to run through my mind that no longer serve me. and breathe and as you exhale, feel the release. I relax and let go of the unconscious need to punish myself or others by withholding my love. Take a deep breath and release as you exhale and let go. We are making room in our consciousness for the ideas and beliefs that we want to spend our time concentrating upon. I am free of outworn and negative habit patterns and behaviors. I am free to express my light, my love, my talents. Free to create and to use my time wisely and well. As we continue to believe every time we exhale, we release more of that unwanted energy and see it transform into the beauty and richness of positive and productive mindsets.
I listen to my words. I listen to the messages I tell myself. And I ask, is this helping me be all that I can be? Or is this getting in my way and cluttering my mind? Let's release the clutter. Release the prison of repetitive negative thinking. And feel the space in which to grow and fill our minds and hearts with all the beauty that we choose to focus on. And we are blessed. We are deeply blessed and enriched as we declutter. And stand in the truth of positive and powerful movement toward greater success and fulfillment. And so it is. Amen. It's time now in our service to bless our tithes and offerings. If you were inspired in any way by our service, if you were blessed in any way, please share an offering with us. When you give to where you receive spiritual inspiration, you are gifted with more and more spiritual inspiration because as you give, so shall you receive. Please remember that a portion of your gifts go to supporting organizations that support human rights and the conservation of our natural resources. Let's affirm our prosperity affirmation together. I give in love because I love to give. God is my source. Here's a gorgeous song from the opera Porgy and Bess. Words by Bose Hayward and Ira Gershwin. Music by George Gershwin. I'm just going to play the instrumental. So thank you to George. 1935. Bess, you is my woman.
Matthew. Thank you. Bless you is my woman. I'm for you and best. Thank you so much, Brett and Matthew. That was absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Let's sing our peace song, shall we? speak the words of our prayer for protection. Together, the light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. Please press the like button and share your comments with us. We do look forward to hearing from you. Also, remember to listen to the Get Off Your Affirmation podcast, available on Apple Podcasts or anywhere that you get your podcasts. Have a wonderful week. You deserve it. Every single person living peace in what we do, only then will our dream come true. Only then will our dream come true, only then